Hi, welcome back everybody to Garage Studio Modelers. I'm Dave Forrest. Uh, in today's episode, I'm solo. I don't have Harvey here with me. Uh, he's busy working on a Sheridan, so uh, look forward to that in a future episode. Uh, but for today, we're going we're gonna to continue back on the Panzer 38T. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on doing filters. And you can see I have an arrangement of oil colors here uh, that we're going to be using. Not all of them. I'll select maybe three or four from, from the range I have here. But just to give, uh, give the viewers an idea of the type of uh, paints you can use for, for Panzer Grey. Uh, and we're going to focus on applying filters. on, on, on So that's, that's really going to be the focus of today's episode. Uh, and I like to use um, oil paints to, to do my filters. Uh, and the reason for that is one is you get a variety of any color you'd want, uh, practically. Uh, and two, I just find with the pre-mixed stuff, while, the, while there's certainly a convenience factor to them, uh, they don't last. They seem that after some point in the bottle, they, you know, the, the pigmentation starts to ball up um, and they're not, I mean, when you first use them, it, great, the, 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 the quality is, is fantastic, but I've noticed uh, that particularly with the wilder f uh, filters I've had and, and also with the, um, with the Megan Ammo, to a lesser degree, they seem to hold a little better, but, um, so I've just, and I just make what I need and then, and then, you know, on to the next project and then, uh, you know, I kind of make what I need uh, for, for that, so. Um, so yeah, so oil, using oil paints are my preferred method, but you can use anything. You can use, I mean, we could use pencils. Uh, we've seen that where you can use, uh, you can just work that down and use the, use the pencil and get that to a thin consistency and apply that on, on an area. Uh, but we'll stick with oils for today, so that will be kind of the method we'll use on this vehicle. So we're going to do everything. We're going to do the turret. We're going to do the, the chassis, um, the, the, the spare fuel tanks, and then the drive sprockets here. Um, actually, no, sorry, we're not going to do the drive sprocket. So I'm going to focus on the upper half of the vehicle uh, here. And the reason for that is that all of the bottom is going to get covered with mud and dust. You're not going to see the, the filters anyway. So we're going to focus more on the upper surfaces uh, to, to get that uh, to get that going. So um, so we'll start <clears throat> we'll start picking colors. We'll start mixing them up. I've got uh, a variety of, of, uh, of colors to pick from. We'll use uh, odorless thinner. Odorless thinner is key. I think you don't want to use anything. Uh, harsh and odorless thinner is the least harsh uh, solvent you can use, so that's that's why we like I like to use that on my weathering, blending, etc. Uh, a variety of brushes, uh, very important. Uh, some some paper, and the reason for that uh, is as you'll see, uh, and you've probably seen in previous episodes, uh, is that once we uh, wet the brush with the color, is to get a lot of that off because really you don't want to apply the filter overly wet, uh, or at least I don't. Um, so I prefer to you know, put very thin coats and kind of let it dry and build it up over time. So that's what we'll be doing here. So uh, we'll take uh, take a bit of a break. We'll get Robert to come in uh, and, and get close up, and we'll start we'll start mixing colors uh, and getting ready to. Okay, so I'm in the process of selecting my colors, and uh, while I've got seven of them, we're only going to use uh, let's say four. And I've got a brown, so I've got this uh, Aptoling 502 Shadow Brown. Uh, so we'll use that for sure because I want to be able to darken some panels and that's a good color to do that with. <clears throat> this is a color that I got in one of those uh, sets for uh, German camo and this one is blue green for German gray. Um, so I don't know if that's something that <clears throat> is still available today or not but uh, I've got it and you can see as Robert pointed out it's to me earlier it's very blue so we'll use that to kind of add a, as a vibrant color. So the brown we'll use to kind of knock things down. This we'll use to kind of uh, bring things up. I've got a Payne's Gray, which is another method of darkening. So that's a dark gray. So that's a possibility. Um, I've got this Field Gray over here, which is kind of in the same, you know, if you, let's open this up. <clears throat> same type of thing. This, this might be a better option because it's got a tinge of green to it. So that might be, let's maybe throw that into the mix. Uh, we'll put that aside. And then I've got, uh, what's this one here? This is a, what color is this? This is a bright green, whatever it is, doesn't say. Oh, a turquoise, turquoise lights. That might be a bit too much, even for me, Robert. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe. Robert's like, are you crazy? <laughs> it's, too, it's way too bright. Yeah, I don't say. <laughs> and then let's open this guy up. This is like a, a this is, what is this? This is uh, copper oxide blue. 
So it's a light blue. So I think we've got two colors that kind of tone things down, and we've got one that bring them up. So we probably want to pick something that brings it up. So I think it's between uh, these two. Let's put the Payne's Gray aside. And this is Intense Blue, which is from the base color set. But I think you can buy this individually. And that's pretty blue. So I think, I think we'll put this one aside. So I think it's really... I think it's down to these two. So let's pick... Let's go with the turquoise. Let's be crazy. Okay, so these are the four colors. So what I've got is I've got my palette. I've got odorless thinner in four, uh, four, of, the, uh, four of the things here, whatever you call these divots, whatever. And then I've got another one for just cleaning the brush. So let's start mixing. And again, when you're mixing these with oil paints, uh, you know, you got to remember to keep it thin. So you just kind of touch. And that's really your filter. So I just I just picked up just a bit. And you, so you, you want your, your filter against a filter, right? It's not a wash. So you want to keep it very thin. Let me just pick up a little bit more. So very, very thin. I think we're good on that. And I need a towel to clean the brush. Okay, we turned on the additional light, so that's why we paused for a bit. But um, so now let's go. So this is the uh, what is this? This is the blue green for Panzer Gray. So that's another. So again, you just just a, you don't need a lot, right? Which is another reason why to do this. I just find it's just more economical to use these. Um, so then we'll get, so this is your feel gray. So this is a darkening filter. A down filter, I guess we'll call it. Down, we'll call them up and down. So this is this will knock things down. Actually, I like that. I think that's a good choice. <clears throat> and then lastly, we'll go with the turquoise light from their fantasy collection series. So just because it says fantasy on it doesn't mean armor modelers should stay away from it. But one of the great colors they have in this range is the Starship Filth. Well, it's pretty intense. It was very intense. Actually, it's probably putting a little bit more paint in there than I wanted to. But that's okay. If you make if you make them a little bit, I mean, you can control it by how you unload the brush. Yeah, it's too thick. But I think in this case, we'll add a little bit of thinner to it. Should thin it out a bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're good. It's a pity because you'll use <clears throat> you'll use very little of these of these. I mean, this is really all you need, like this amount. Here. That's okay, so we have uh, so we have our four colors. We have a rinsing um, we have a rinsing uh, dish here. Um, so well, let's uh, let's get into it. Let's start maybe with the turret. So the so when we did the modulation last time, this turned out fairly uh, light compared to the base color. So to give you an idea, the base color is kind of what you see here underneath. That may be kind of hard, and maybe some shadows because of the clips here, but. Um, so you can see how the two highlight colors came into play and really kind of brighten things up. So I think it looks, so, so from my standpoint, the color looks good, but I'd like to break up the monotony of it, and which is, and again, when you're doing a, I think the rule of thumb, and I'm still trying to figure this out, and, and we'll, we'll get into this when we do a, a multicolor cam uh, in some future build. But for single colors, uh, I think the key is um, to try and break things up. And then with a multicolor, um, you're trying to unite things. So you, uh, so we'll see. I think when we did the 
I, I, mean, I think when we did the brum bar, I'll have to go back and look, but I think we basically stuck to one filter for, or maybe we did different colors on different panels. Um, but we'll cover that in a future episode. So for a single color, I think it's it, it's really important. I think that's what um, that's really the the, the true uh, gift that filters give to a build is is being able to break it up and and to add some variety so that not all of the panels look the same and there's some variation. And again, it's completely artistic license. And artistic license plays, at least for me, plays a huge role in deciding you know what you do and the techniques that you apply to to a build. Um, because I want it to look interesting. So really, my main goal in doing all of this is to make the model look interesting. So I think here, let's start with, maybe we'll do, and when you're applying filters, you're kind of looking for natural demarcations on the model. So maybe we'll do a color here and a color here. So let's pick out, seeing as this captures a lot of light, let's look, let's look at brightening. Now let's go right for this bright, obnoxious turquoise color. Now here's where, your paper comes in because you want to take when you unload when you load the brush up you want to take most of it off and what I like to do is just do very thin very thin layers so there's and it may be hard for the camera to pick up but there's just a hint of of change on that, so we'll add. So I, I like to, you know, again, I like to keep things in. I like to build them up in layers. So for this part here, again, it's it's um, maybe let's look at going the other way, and let's look at darkening that, and maybe let's use let's use this field gray for that. So again, take most of it off, and then just apply it. And again, it's a filter; you don't have to be too precise with it. But you do want to be even with it. You don't want it to pool up. Because if it pools up, then it causes problems. So just an, so again, you can, <clears throat> looking at it, I can barely, I can tell that this is a little bit brighter. I can tell this is a little bit darker. Um, so there's already a bit of an effect. So let's go on to another, let's do the top of the hatch here. Maybe let's do that in the, uh, what blue was that? That was the blue-green for German gray. That's this guy here. So let's pick up some paint or some color, unload that, and then let's do the top. Now you don't have to do every single panel or area. You can leave some in the original color. So it's already you're starting to break up the monotony of the color already here. So we have three different colors on the top. So maybe let's go to the sides, and for the sides, you know, again, you have a panel here, you have a large panel here at the back, and then the same thing on the other side. So let's let's look at doing that. Let's go with um, hmm. yeah, very random. So <clears throat> again, so if we did the the turquoise up here, um, let's do again because this would catch a lot of. Let's do the let's go back to the blue green. Again, unload it. Uh, let's do that there. Let's go on the sides. And it's kind of important to rinse your brush in between colors, but because they're so diluted, I mean, if you happen to forget, not the end of the world. Uh, let's use this. So we haven't used the shadow brown. Let's mix that up. And you can see how thin these are, right? I mean, you can barely, I mean, that's how, if you can catch that on the palette, that's how thin we're working here. Um, and then let's do, this is the, this is the shadow brown on the side here. And I can already, I can already tell that it's knocking back the color. So we'll, we'll apply two or three coats. So we'll let this, we'll let this dry. Um, and then maybe here we'll go back to Vibrant. Yes, I didn't rinse that. So don't go from a dark color to a light color without rinsing. Let's go back, pick up the Vibrant. And let's maybe just do this little swath here. Again, you're just trying to, you're just trying to alter, um, you know, the base color ever so slightly. 
And on this side, um, I mean, you could mirror, let's, maybe that's the simplest thing, let's mirror what we did there. So let's go with brown. And I find the brown is a good, good universal way of kind of knocking back the base color on just about any, you know, it works well on olive drab, works well on 4BO green, works well on German gray, or this would work well on a tritone, you know, late war German camouflage. Um, yeah, I think, how's that, per and then we did, uh, we did the vibrant green or the turquoise. So when you're picking your filters, your colors, I mean, you're trying to work within the same, kind of the same tones. So for, for the Panzer Gray, I picked, you know, blue, because we want to kind of bring out some, some blue, like blue with the blue and the turquoise, and then, you know, kind of the field gray and the brown, kind of stay within that tone. Uh, in the past, I know when I did the Sherman, the, the very first video I did was the, which was the, a video on filters for that Sherman I built. Um, you know, I, I used uh, like magenta. Um, uh, so some very bright, vibrant colors. You can do that too, um, but I won't do it on the whole model. So let's do the front. So the front, let's do in the intense, or sorry, not the intense, the uh, blue green for Panzer Gray. This blue here, and maybe maybe we do one side one color and one side the other color. Or maybe do, hang on, let's do this. Let's do both sides. But then we'll do the gun in the vibrant, the vibrant turquoise, just to make that pop. Because it does stand out. Or we want it to stand out. So this is, this is the part I mean, you have to be patient here because it takes a while for these effects to build up. But I can already see a difference. So this is where we put the uh, turquoise and this is where we put the, uh, I think we use field gray there. Um, and you can see there's a difference, right? This is brighter, that's knocked down a bit. We use the blue green up here. So now we're starting to get <clears throat> different tones, slight different tones. So um, that's exactly what we're looking to do here. So I think we're, yeah, so we'll set that aside to dry and let's let's focus on doing the chassis. Uh, so again, here you're looking for natural uh, demarcation points. So we have like three big panels here. You've got a toolbox here, here, and here. Uh, you've got another area here. You've got this hatch here. So um, maybe the easiest thing to do, and again, I'm not, I haven't really planned this out. So we're just kind of going, shooting from the hip here. But let me just get this paper towel over here. I actually miss having Harvey here today. I won't don't tell him that because I'll just go to his head like it always does. But um, yeah, yeah, I kind of miss having the banter back and forth. But we'll get him we'll get him back when he has his uh, Sheridan ready to go. And we're also going to bring Sandy back to do some more. We had a lot of great response on the uh, while I'm doing this. We had a lot of great response on the um, Panzer Gray. Uh, the video that we did. So we're going to definitely do some more on different topics. Like, um, I think the next one we're going to do is going to be on British colors. Uh, and then we'll do another one on olive drab. We'll do four BL green. We'll get into some late war German colors. Okay. So here, so getting back to the filters. So here, because of this, I want this hatch to pop. I'm going to use the turquoise on the front one the front half and then I'm gonna go to the blue green for this guy just to or for the back half rather and already I can see that there's a there's a variation between the two let's go um, maybe let's maybe while we're doing the light colors let's go and maybe do this one in the turquoise and then again you have that you have that access hatch here let's do that in the turquoise 
So I think when you're applying your filters, it's the same, um, you know, you're using the lighter filters to accentuate areas that you've, that you've taken the time to do in your modulation process. Um, let's maybe also, let's get some of that. I'm liking, I'm liking this turquoise color. Uh, let's get some of that on just the tops here. Maybe get, go back to blue for whatever this is. I don't know if this is a horn or what this what this piece is here. I should really do more research on my on my uh, vehicles. Let's go back to the turquoise. And again, as I'm picking up color, I'm, I'm unloading onto that piece of paper. Let's do this here. And this is interesting because so for this toolbox, you've got like an upper half and a lower half. So I know we're kind of jumping out of the light colors, but let's let's jump to one of the darker ones. Let's go. Let's go to the uh, field gray, and sometimes you have to mix these up. So I mix them up every now and again to make sure that you, know, you got a good distribution of the pigment. And for the lower half, let's go darker. And again, you don't have to be too precise, but you do have to be even. So again, just by my naked eye, and hopefully the camera and the lighting in here can pick it up uh, for for the viewers. But there's there's definitely a tone variation between the upper half and the lower half of this of this tool toolbox. So let's let's do the same thing on the other side, but let's go. So now again, because I've gone to a darker color, just make sure you rinse your brush out or clean your brush out. So let's do uh, let's do the blue green for the upper part. And then let's go to the brown for the lower. Again, mix up your pigments or your uh, your filter mix. Yeah, I think I think after my experiences with the bottle filters going off on me, I think I think I'll stick with this. Again, you can see there's a nice, there's a, a bit of the same type of variation, kind of the upper and lower part of that toolbox. Looks good. Um, let's get into, okay, so let's attack these nice panels in the back here. So I th think what we're gonna do is let's maybe do a light, a light, and a dark. So let's rinse. So let's go to the turquoise for one side, mix that up, I can unload the brush. So here, and just because like I, there's a lot of, you know, during the modulation process, we kind of built up a lot of the highlight color on this. Um, you know, if you're happy with that, use that as a guide for, uh, for your filters. Now, if I was way too light and I, I want to darken it, then I might go the other way. So for the other side, let's do, let's do the blue green, which is really more blue. And I think filters, well, let's talk about filters philosophically for a minute. I think for, for me, filters, so you, I think you absolutely need them on a single color camo because you need something to break up the, the monotony of it um, to give it that yeah you know, it just gives it that depth and that that variation I think it's again it's artistic license but uh, I think it I think it works let's okay for the middle panel I'm just using the the field the field gray um, so I think you, I, I think it's a must for me it's an absolute must you need to do this. Um, for single color camos. And if you go back and you look at my, the, the stug I did, um, I mean, that's a good example of how those, how the filters were able to break up that panzer gray that we had. 
and I think that turned out pretty nice. So we're hoping for the same type of success here. I think for multicolor, um, I think filters do, it can do a couple of things for you there. Um, they can unite everything, so they can kind of bring all those colors together. Um, meanwhile, I'm just going to attack this toolbox here. Let's let's do the same type of thing. I, I really like the effect here. Well, we'll do the upper half. Maybe because we have two demarcate, like we have this rear part and this perforated part. Let's kind of break it up. So I'm going to use the turquoise on one and the blue on another. So let's go turquoise back here. And then go pick up the blue green for this perforated part here. So I think so. I think for a multicolor camp, filters can are good at bringing everything together. Um, but I like the idea of still separating out um, and doing different panels and different colors. And maybe you go a little bit wider on a multicolor camel. Uh, let's go and pick up. Let's do the brown for the dark color for the bottom half of that. Like so, there we go. And maybe maybe back here too. Now the tricky part is remembering what colors they do on what panels. So hopefully hopefully I remember it. Um, so just let's take a step back. So just looking at the model, um, you know, I can see that there there is a a good variation of colors. Now we haven't done every single panel. Um, so maybe what we'll do is maybe just go in while I have while I have the brown. Let's do maybe this one here we'll do we'll kind of darken that up. And then right next to it let's go with the blue green. So you can see as little as, as little. I mean, that's really all you need is the, for that just that little dab of color. Like this is the blue green I've, I've used. So I still I, I have enough to get me through the rest of the model, but you can see how yeah, that's really all you need. So that's a nice thing with doing with making your own is you can really kind of meter things out and limit the waste. Um, let's attack. And I'm just kind of going over random bits here. So let's go back and pick up some turquoise and do this vision port in that turquoise color. Maybe on the front. Yeah, we didn't pay any attention to this front panel. So let's do that. So I'm going to go turquoise again on the whole front panel because, again, I want it to kind of stand out. And then maybe I'll use the blue green to pick out the kind of the vision ports, the gun mount, just to break, just to give it that little bit of variation. And then on, so we, we did the center panel, but we didn't do anything around it. So let's go dark. Maybe go back to the, let's use the field gray. Kind of like that color. And gonna get in there and just just fill in. Again, you're gonna get a lot of dust and mud build up here, at least on the front half of this. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna pay too much attention to the bottom because you're gonna hide all of that with weathering. But let's do. Let me mix that up. Let's do let's do the turquoise on that front plate here. Again, we're gonna paint the we're gonna paint the tracks a different color, so don't worry too much about them. Let's go back and let's do a dark color in there. Let's go back and do the brown. Let's 
go back and maybe put brown in here while I have the brush loaded. And let's do a field gray on that last bit. Um, and I think the oh yeah, we still got the rear of the vehicle to do. So let's go. Let's kind of focus on this part on back. Let's. Although I said I kind of miss having Harvey here. The nice part is there's no snarky comments coming from Harvey today. Everything's very civil. So let's do. Um, Let's put a highlight color here. And let's go with the blue over here and then the darker colors on the inside. We'll do a little field gray on this side and maybe a little brown on the other side. So starting to look different. So now, uh, compared to what it was before, the mall is starting to develop a little bit of character. So we'll let this first coat dry, and then we'll go in and we'll go back to the turd, just reapply uh, the same colors, uh, just to get, to get that more of a demarcation, more of an intensity. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're we're gonna uh, we're back to the turd. So I just uh, while we pause, I just hit everything with a hair dryer just to. Uh, you know, kind of accelerate the drying process. Um, so here I'm going to pick up some of the, so I put turquoise on the back here. Um, so we'll just, just go and add another layer of color. So again, you can see, you can really start to see the difference between the two. Um, I remember we did blue on the back. So Let's go back and highlight that. We did uh, field gray, or was it brown? I think it was field gray. So if you, if you, it's a good thing we don't have six colors. Um, so the important thing is when you're going back, it's, so it's hard to be, to be fair, Robert, Robert and I were talking about this off camera, it's kind of hard to remember what colors you did on what panels. But as long as you're using highlights and dark colors, or highlight colors and, and darker colors on the same panel, you should be fine. So here we're doing the field gray. All right, so again, you can see now there's a nice, differentiation between these two tones. Uh, let's do, uh, I think we did feel gray on the side here. And I think we did brown on the other side, so let's go pick up some brown. And then the front parts, we did the highlight color, so we'll go pick that back up again. And grab some turquoise here. And we did blue on the other side, so almost out of the blue, but we can mix up more if we need to. Oh, we also did blue on the top, that I do remember. So that's starting to look good in terms of having different colors. 
I think here we want to do, let's do some blue, blue. And I think we did turquoise in the middle. And even if you make a mistake and you kind of mix your colors, it's still going to create a different tone. So it's not the end of the world. That's why I don't pay too much attention to it. Um, yeah, so I think you know, I look at that turret and I say, you know, we've got nice different tones on the top. So it's clearly visible to me now. Hopefully the camera's doing a good job of picking this up. Um, same thing on the back. There's a nice, even though we, even though these are both highlights, so if you use the turquoise here and the blue green here, there's a nice difference. And again, this is going to get you know when you when you do the streaking and the washes and uh, you know and you, and you add your 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 decals, 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 decals. I guess um, you know that's all going to kind of blend everything in as you go forward. So I think I think I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know that I do more coats. Let's uh, let's set that aside to dry, and then let's go back to this. So, um, so let's stick with the highlight colors. So again, kind of you know in the same order. Kind of do a hatch. Let's do. We did that here with the the top of the toolbox. Um, I'm really out of blue. Do that over here for this toolbox. And then use the blue here. So now it's now with the with the second coat even it's really making a difference. Let's see, let's go and do, I think we did turquoise, or maybe, yeah, we did turquoise in the back half. Let's do blue there. Let's do blue here on this smoke grenade container. Let's go back to the turquoise the back half, and then this other side here. So again, again, you can see, you know, things are things are starting to break up, which is what you want. Um, we did turquoise on the front for this front panel here. We did turquoise here. We did a light color. I think I can't remember if it was the blue or the turquoise, but we'll just go over the light color on these. Make those pop. Um, yeah, so now you're starting to get, there's a visible difference. Let's go back to our dark color. So let's do feel gray for this middle panel here. That looks good. Yeah, that's really starting to break up now. Let's do, I think we did, yeah, we did feel gray here. So again, just the underneath part, just kind of break that up a bit. So you can see now there's a clear demarcation between the upper and lower, which is great. Let's go and pick up the brown and do this side. So you can see within, you know, the course of about half an hour, 45 minutes, you've added another layer of interest to the model. So again, with particularly when you're doing your, um, when you're doing a single color, I, I think it's a key critical step here. Yeah, that's really starting to look interesting now. 
So let's do a carry on with the brown. Let's, we said we did the brown on the kind of the area around the hatch, just to kind of further accentuate that hatch in the front. So now you can see there's a clear difference between this has the turquoise, this has the brown filter on it. And that's what you want. I mean, you, you want to create that difference between uh, between different panels and different features on a vehicle. So I can think, yeah, I think we're almost there. Again, I haven't done anything on it because this is, this is just going to get covered with, with mud. Um, but maybe, you know what, let's, I'm going to reverse that. Let's start doing the wheels. And what I would do is I would do I would do one in each color. We've got four filters here. Actually, I gotta make some more of the blue green. So let's do that. You can see how very little you need. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's just alternate, like light, dark, light, dark. So we'll do the first one in, in the blue. And then maybe on the other side, we'll do dark, light, dark, light. And then let's maybe alternate and do the blue on the rear. And then let's go and get turquoise. Uh, let's do that over here. And then flip over. So we did the blue here. Let's do the turquoise on this wheel. Clean it off. And then let me get to our dark colors. So let's do field gray. Let's do that here. Normally I won't do the road wheels, but because these are so big and prominent. Um, so we said light dark, so let's do this one here. So this is the field gray. And then let's go pick up some of the brown. Do this last one here in brown. Yeah, just that, I mean, if we had like small Panzer IV or Panzer III road wheels, I don't know that I'd necessarily bother because these are fairly big and prominent and we're not going to get mud on everything. Uh, and then here we'll do the dark brown on the front road wheel. Okay, so let's try and remember that sequence for next time to go over the second color or the second coat. Uh, in the meantime, we can, I think we can continue along the top, but that's looking, that's looking pretty good. Um, let's go back and let's pay attention to the rear. So let's do this guy in the let's go back and pick up some of that green blue. Again we for the grenade holders or the smoke grenade. Um, and then let's go and do maybe a nice brown for the rest. I mean, this will get a lot of attention in terms of dirt and mud kicking up on the rear part of the vehicle. So I was introduced to a new phenomenon on Facebook called Tank Butt Fridays. 
where people send in pictures of the posterior part of their armor vehicles, which I thought was, that was a pretty neat concept. Um, yeah, I think we're, I think we're good. I like, I like where we are. I think we've accomplished the mission of kind of breaking up and adding, uh, you know, kind of variability to the color panel by panel, which is what you want. I think we have a nice, a nice base to work forward uh, on in terms of doing, you know, the washes and the streaking and other weathering effects. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with this. Um, so I think we're good. Um, so I'm just going to do another coat on the wheels off camera. But I think that's going to conclude our episode for today. So again, I um, hope this was useful. Thanks very much for, uh, for hanging out with me for the last uh, 30, 40 minutes or so. Uh, and we'll look forward to the next one. What we'll do, uh, so the next uh, video we'll do, um, we'll do some decals. So I'll do those on camera, decals, decals. Because uh, we did have a request in the comments for that, so I'll make sure that gets done. And then uh, we'll also start doing uh, washes on the vehicle. So next time you see this, we'll have the decals on one side. I'll apply them live on the other, and then we'll start doing washes on the rest of the vehicle. And we'll really start getting into the meat of the weathering process, which is where, which is my favorite part of, of, of the whole um, uh, build process in terms of, I think, washes is where you start to see things pop. Uh, you start to see things come to life uh, in, in a real way. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. So we'll catch you next time, uh, and take care until then.